The Red and the Black, in French, Le Rouge et le Noir, Chronique du Zic Zico, is an 1832 volume historical novel by Marie Henry Bale, better known by the pen name Stendhal. The Red and the Black follows the rise and fall of Julian Sorrel, a bright and ambitious, but in many ways naive, young man of lowly birth, who resolves to work his way up in society, a difficult thing to do in the highly stratified France of the Bourbon Restoration, 1815-1830. The story's setting gives Stendhal ample room to criticize and, frequently, satirize this society, he does both with gusto. The novel reaches its climax with Julian's trial for attempted murder, from which trial his victim herself tries to save him. In the first book, Stendhal gives Julian Sorrel's origins. He is the son of a carpenter who lives in the fictional town of Verrières, in French Comte. He is an unrepentant devotee of Napoleon Bonaparte, upon whom he patterns his own behavior. Bonaparte's biography, Memorial of Saint Helena, is his favorite book. His brothers are cruel to him because of his intellectual pretensions, so entering into his father's business alongside them is out of the question. Nonetheless, Julian fancies himself a ruthless opportunist, seeing no way, in the wake of Napoleon's deposition, to advance socially through the once glorious military, he resolves to enter the Catholic Church. There, he becomes an acolyte of the local prelate, and through him receives his first job as a tutor to the mayor's children. Even at this early stage in the novel and his career, Julian is a self-satisfied cynic, he plays the role of a devout clergyman because he knows he must and not from any true dedication to the work. Indeed, in that spirit, he has an affair with Madame de Renal, his employer's wife. The affair ends abruptly when his mistress's chambermaid, Elisa, who is in love with Julian herself, decries their affair to the entire town. The Ab Chilin relocates Julian elsewhere to his seminary in Besankin, which he finds oppressive. The seminary's director, Ab Perard, grows to like Julian, however, and advocates for him. When Perard leaves his post, afraid that his enemies will target his now unprotected protege, he recommends Julian for a secretarial position with the Marquis de la Mole, who hires him. Book 2 finds Julian in Paris, working for the de la Moles. They look down on him for his low birth, for his part, Julian inwardly sneers at the hypocrisy and materialism of the Parisian elite. He finds much to dislike about the stultifying and oppressive social environment affected by the reigning regime. Nonetheless, he is loyal to his master. The Marquis de la Mole sends Julian on a dangerous mission to convey a letter, by memory, to the exiled Duc d'Engaline. Julian does so, despite the fact that the ultimate effect of his action is to aid a regime he despises. The Marquis's daughter, Mathilde, a bookish and romantic girl, who in many ways appears as the female mirror of Julian, struggles with her attraction to the lowborn protagonist. She seduces him on two occasions, but then turns him away. While he is on his mission to the Duc d'Engaulim, however, he gains the key to her heart from a roving Russian, Prince Korzov, he acts indifferently to her. Even arranging to have her intercept a parcel of love letters purportedly intended for another woman, the wealthy widow, Madame de Fervax. Mathild falls for the ploy and for Julian. She discloses, as well, that she is pregnant with his child. Nevertheless, it is too late, she has become affianced to Monsieur de Croissonnois, heir to a duchy. The Marquis is infuriated when he learns of Julian's affair with his daughter, but in the light of her affections and his own attachment to Julian, he relents, gifting Julian with income, property, and a title which make him, finally, fit to marry Mathilde. However, before the marriage can take place, a letter from Madame de Reno, by way of Julian's former employer, the Ab Chilin, changes the Marquis's mind. In the letter, Madame de Renal paints Julian as a heartless social climber who seduces women only to get ahead and then tosses them aside. When Julian learns that the Marquis has rescinded his marriage blessing because of Madame de Renal's letter, he returns to Verrières and shoots her in the middle of mass. He is shortly imprisoned, but de Renal survives. Both of his former lovers try to secure his release, Mathil through bribery, and de Renal by refusing to testify against him. The latter's enduring love for Julian, despite his attempted murder of her, makes him realize that he loves her as well. In the end, he is sentenced to the guillotine anyway. Mathild, playing the role of Queen Margot, kisses his severed head and later builds a shrine at his burial place. Madame de Renal dies of heartbreak only days after his death. The Red and the Black is notable as one of the first, and still most impressive, early works of the realist genre. 
Although Stendhal owed stylistically to the romantics as well, his nuanced exploration of the motives and psyches of his characters and their searching investigations of their own motives and psyches stands out for its modern concern with portraying fictional characters realistically. As complex, self-contradictory, subtle, and flawed. Since its publication, an argument has waged over whether Julian is a hero or anti-hero The answer to this question, ultimately, depending on how much his confessions laid in the novel are taken as truthful. Rather than as the lofty emoting of a passionate but inconstant young man. Stendhal's portrayal of Julian provides evidence to support both readings. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.